Tinubu and the controversial Lagos Calabar Coastal Project. Take a look at this. Today is my, my day to brag. Whether you like it or not, you are here. And the hope is here. If you have hope, you have Raman, you have Ashwaju, and you have Dave, the deal is done. So guys, Peter Obi has a message for Tinobu. I mean, Peter Obi has hit him hard. I mean, Peter Obi has come hard this time because of this Calabar Coastal Road project that Tinubu is embarking on. And you can see him bragging. Peter Obi has a real message for him. But before I allow you to take a look at that message, listen to how Arise Television presented Tinubu's bragging over this project. Take a look. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's trip to Lagos to inaugurate the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway has been met with mixed reactions well over the weekend. One lane of the third mainland bridge was shut down ahead of his arrival and was lined with the Nigerian and APC flags as well as photos of the president in preparation for his one year in office. The president during the inauguration ceremony lauded the Minister of Works David Umahi for rehabilitating the third mainland bridge and his diligence in handling the coastal highway project, saying that he was very happy and should be allowed to brag. Let's take a listen before we take some reactions. Today is my, my day to brag. Whether you like it or not, you are here. And the hope is here. If you have hope, you have Raman, you have Ashwaju, and you have Dave, the deal is done. The dream is realizable. I said earlier, it's my bragging day. The way we are going, we have a rule that we outlast us and outlive all of us here present. That is how to build the future. I commend the Honorable Minister of Works once again. Like I said, it's my bragging day. Don't be afraid. We will do this road. 700 kilometers. It will be a success for Nigeria. I will do more of this. You and I, together, the whole Nigeria, a very bold endeavor. Please, share with me. Share in the joy. I am a very happy man today. Thank you very much. All right. I'm sure, uh, you know, cross-section of Nigerians are sharing the joy with uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And, you know, like we're saying, he must complete the road like he has promised. But let me take some uh, tweets. This is from Chairman, who wrote, It is an exciting time for Nigeria's infrastructure development. These projects will improve connectivity, facilitate trade, and enhance the quality of life for citizens. I'm so excited about the Lagos Calabar Superhighway in particular, we're all looking forward to the positive impact these projects will bring to the country's growth and progress. A great statement there. But, you know, Ayo, I, you know, I talked about the uh, flags on the third mainland bridge. This caused a lot of controversy. Let me take this tweet. This user wrote, first of all, the posters are unnecessary. Posters should focus more on promoting Nigeria and progress. The bridge wasn't built with his money. That being said, the bridge is not a project that should be celebrated. We still celebrate mediocrity because we don't seem to know what our needs are as citizens. 
one sentence quickly, then I'll take this All one. Right, in terms I, of the third Milan Bridge, and yeah. I mean, that video was quite the video, wasn't it? Was it was quite the video, and, and I was quite surprised. I've asked what name would be called, because clearly he cannot be commissioning since he didn't complete the bridge. Yeah. Kudos Don't must be given to... to <laughs> <Tinobu. Cannot. laughs> so what will I be able to do? <laughs> oh, Shagari. <laughs> <laughs> okay. the one in power. All right. No, but, we, I mean, this we cannot... I mean, he's proud of the work that yeah. um, um, Dave Mahi has done, and I must say that great job. In terms of the successive governments who've come, this is the best rehabilitation we've seen thus with third Milan Bridge. However, it is not enough to then make such a show of it. Yes. And like the last tweet said, or the last ex-user said, it's because we're so used to mediocrity. Yes. So that's why a government official will fix um, a um, you know, pothole on the road and commission it. Yes. We'll put Pot, um, put a um, borehole water, or we'll sink a borehole, commission it. Yeah. We must come to the end and see, elevate our uh, leadership. And I think it's, it, it's, I think you should remove that as part of the celebration. <laughs> no, I mean, he I can really honor and acknowledge so well. Dave Umahi, but actually put flags, line it up and celebrate. <sighs> Yeah, but I will also want you to discuss this story. So, guys, let me allow you to listen to what Mr. Peter Obi said. Honestly, this government is not thinking. No doubt we are not having investors coming into the country. Don't forget that infrastructures are one of the things, you know, businesses outside the country are looking at before they come into a country to invest. We don't have roads, despite the fact that Buari paid much of his attention on infrastructure. Today, there are nowhere to be found. That is how the APC deceived us. This administration now has come again. They've abandoned all the ones that Buari started only for them to go and look for new projects again where they would divert more, much more money to instead of attending to the current needs of Nigerians. Take a look at Peter Obi's response. The Kaduna bypass will take you hours. You cannot go from Apuja to Lokoja. You can't drive from Lokoja to Auchi. You can't go from Aochi to Benin. The east-west road has not been completed. You can't even drive from Benin to Sapele to Wari. You can't go from Calabar to Yo. I can go on and on. Let's fix all this. Can't drive today from Enugu to Osoka. You can't go from Osoka, where we call Ubola from, to Otubo. You can't go from Otubo to Makode. Hmm. These roads are in a mess. You need to fix them. So we have enough network of roads that they already exist. Same thing, Lagos, Ibado. You can't go to Ibado. There's a place you can't go, you can't drive to. Go to Jabo, Debini, all the... No! So why are we starting new one? And I stand by it. If I was voted into office, I told them, put in our manifesto. We're not going to start anything new. Let's fix it. And that's what I was telling you about when they talk about education, rules, everything in the number state. So guys, we all know that we have so many scattered roads across Nigeria. Why is it that this government is not seeing, you know, the need to attend to all those roads? And we all know that bandits and all the bad guys are taking advantage of the bad roads we have in Nigeria, you know, to cause mayhem on the lives of the people, the citizens. I mean, how many people have been kidnapped? How many people have been taken, sent to eternity? How many people have lost their lives because of the bad roads we have? How has it affected businesses? Why is it that this government is not even seeing that? Why Nigeria is not working? to this because part of it is because of the poor road connections that we have people will have their goods either manufactured or even processed or harvested from their farms but to transport it from one end to the other is another huge task and this government is not even seeing reasons with nigerians to go rehabilitate all these roads to make this road to be working only for tinubu to tell us that he's embarking on this road project and that is why nigeria is not moving forward because one of the things people look at is all these infrastructures, I mean, what the foreigners look at before coming to Nigeria to invest, is all the, the, the infrastructures on ground. And during the time of Buari, Buari told us that he has focused more on building infrastructure, and today we don't have infrastructure. Now, this government, again, wants to abandon all the projects Buari started to go and begin fresh projects. So, guys, 
this is really, really so bad for this country. Australian the protest that rocked Kano State over the weekend in the wake of the dethronement of Amino Ado Bayero, the 15th Emir of Kano Bayero, who was deposed last Thursday after the governor of the state, Abba Yusuf, signed a new law that repealed the Emirate Council Law 2019, returned to Kano in the early hours of Saturday and moved into the palace in Nasara local government area. Governor Abba Yusuf immediately ordered for his arrest for creating tension in the state, while supporters of Ado Bayero on Sunday trooped to the streets of Kano in protest, holding banners and placards with inscriptions demanding that Bayero be reinstated while chanting anti-government songs. They also erected bonfires on busy roads while alleging that the emirship tussle has everything to do with politics. I know you're very passionate about this topic, really. I mean, over the weekend, we spoke to a, a bunch of analysts and, uh, you know, our correspondent in uh, Kanu, who has told us that, you know, the um, Ab Ado Bayero is in the Nasara Palace right now being guarded by soldiers. We did have a statement from the defense headquarters saying that the only reason that they are there is because they are trying to, you know, um, in insist on the uh, peace law and order. But of course, you had the deputy governor of Kano State over the weekend accusing the NSA of using federal might and even providing a plane for Ado Bayero uh, to return back. But now he has recanted. I mean, we have that video. Uh, I think he did that this morning. He has apologized to uh, the NSA, who actually threatened him threaten him that, you know, if you do not uh, um, take back that uh, defamatory statement, I will sue you to court. Like the headlines yesterday, two yeah. emirs, one, one kingdom. kingdom. How is this going to be resolved? Audrey, it is so sad. Yes. You know why? Because these are family members fighting out there in public glare because of politicians. Our dear Kanu is being decimated because of politicians. These are relatives. These are cousins. These are people that have intermarried. The Emir of Bichi, the brother to Aminu, Nasiru, was talking about his very close relationship with Muhammad al Sadusi while they were growing up. Both Emirs are put 62 years old of age. The same age mates grew up in the courts together. But politicians, and that's why my prayer for our politicians, may they have the heart like children, pure and clean, mm. to forgive and to heal, to be able to make this country grow. But we saw when the injustice started. So for all of those that are saying, yeah, the deputy governor might have apologized to the NSA. But for all of those and the military that is talking, was this not the same military when Sanusi was deposed that was used to escort Sanusi out of town in a plane? Why didn't they use the same military then to bring Sanusi back to town to cause chaos after his deposition? This was the same military that was used to escort Sanusi out of town and security forces. But today, because chaos wants to reign, they have used the same security forces to bring a deposed one back into town. The injustice was done in the first place. Mm. We all know since 1819 that this ruling house had been there. There's never been a time as, maybe okay, when you save for the time of Rimi in the 80s, and he saw the consequences. And probably the colonial times, where they tried to push a wheel in the cog of the progress of Kano. We all know that there's only one ser king in Kano. But the law was made to split it into five areas under Ganduje. Sanusi went to court then. He won his cases in court, but nothing was reversed. So for all of us that are so quick to talk that, oh, you can ask for the military, if the government in your side, you see the military backing. Can you and I say we want military protection from harassment we face every day? Is it that easy in Nigeria? 
And now this deposed emir was brought back. Now we have two emirs. Two families are loggerheads. Now all of a sudden the court order came out, ex parte, to wait for the 3rd of June. Probably, I'm sure most parts are waiting for the 3rd of June. But I know in this ruling house, they must have elders. I feel both parties should be called by their elders and they should talk because they cannot afford to make this family look bad outside. The family that holds, that leads the Emirate of Kano. They cannot allow this family to look bad. They should settle it among themselves amicably. All right. We well, can't keep making this drawn out in the courts. All right. There are two statements that have been released, actually. So, you know, the issue of um, the soldiers, you know, escorting Ado Bayero out. I believe at the time, uh, Sanusi Lamido was banished. And I think this is a, a little bit of a, a different scenario here where um, Ado Bayero and the other five emirs were dethroned. Let me read the statement from the army uh, regarding the soldiers. They had said that. Uh, contrary to insinuation by the Kano State Chapter of the Nigerian Bar Association as published by Premium Times, troops of the Nigerian Army have not been involved in the Kano State Emirate tussle and are not involved in enforcing any court order. They have only taken proactive steps to checkmate any possible breakdown or breach of the security that may be occasioned by the Kano Emirship tussle. We also saw Atiku Abubakar release a statement over the weekend saying that if war breaks down in Kano State, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu should be held to account. A quick statement, so I take this story. Okay, I, there are three issues that I would like to talk about. What we're dealing with here, conceptually, is a conflict between tradition and modernity, conflict at the level of power, and it is not new. Many students of history will recall that as far back as 1851, when the British wanted to impose the Treaty of Lagos, they deposed Kusoko or Bakusoko of Lagos, who was not cooperating with them. Uh, succeeding Obakusoko was Obakitoye, leading to the signing of the Treaty of Lagos in 1861. Now, you also had the case of uh, King Jaja of Ukobo. King Jaja of Ukobo who was also deposed because he was not cooperating with the uh, British. In fact, he was exiled. He was banished, and then he was asked to return. I think he died on his way when he was first returning. You had the case of 1897. Uh, about of the uh, Benin Kingdom. He too was deposed, you know, removed because he didn't cooperate with the British. You had to just jump the narrative. In 1966, when Sir Olatero Olagbegi, the Olawa of did not cooperate with the uh, 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 action group in the Western region, he was removed. It was also around that period when. Uh, Sanusi's uh, grandfather, Sanusi the first, you know, because uh, he, he, his grandfather was accused of insubordination because there was an event of the uh, leaders of thought in northern Nigeria, and the Sadauna was there, and he, he sat down as the Emir of Kano. He was accused of insubordination. He was removed. In the case of uh, Sanusi, Lamido Sanusi, uh, Emir of Kano, you know, it's a case of history repeating itself. So you always have this conflict, which Wale Shoinka has dramatized in Kungi's harvest. Uh, you know, that's one level of it. The second level of it is that beyond this conflict, it's about procedure. Did the government of uh, Kano State, did they handle the matter well? Now, uh, Atiku Abubakar, uh, former vice president, has said the state government acted within the law. Section 4, the lawmakers doing their job of repealing the law. Section 5, the governor doing his bait. Section 6, judiciary also intervening. There's some opaqueness, conflict here. Now, the law allows the president to assent, to give his assent within 30 days. Governor of uh, Kano State, taking that uh, repeal, uh, uh, chieftaincy law from the uh, House of Assembly immediately signed it the same day. He had 30 days to consult, to speak to the uh, emirs that will be removed, to say, you guys are going. You know, this is what we have decided, and I'm going to sign the law. Talk to the uh, emir, 
uh, who had been uh, uh, deposed, that's uh, Adobairo, and then, you know, try to do his own work before now signing and do the process. But the whole thing was done in such a hurry. That's why there's so much anxiety in Kano. I think some attention should have been paid to procedure, to managing the tension before, you know, just moving so fast. My third point is about the law. We're told that Justice Lehman, you know, ordered uh, an injunction, you know, a restraining order and all that, where ex party orders are usually, you know, abused. And questions have been raised about abuse of ex party orders. But the law is an ass, as Charles Dickens has told us mm -hmm. in a tale of two cities. So even when the law behaves like an ass, you still respect it. The only way you can vacate it is still to go through the process of law. So these are the uh, big issues in Kano, mm -hmm. but the residual point is that it is important that peace is maintained. Absolutely. Kano has a large population. It's a very volatile place. President Tinubu, which is the point by uh, Vice President, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, cannot afford Absolutely. violence Absolutely. In, in Kano State. And he has a duty to uh, intervene and make sure that the peace is maintained. The military, they say they are on standby. Well, they say if the police are overwhelmed, they will step in. The, what we just want is that we don't want crisis Absolutely. in Kano State. And President Tinubu should see his own interest mm -hmm. in the matter. Yeah. He cannot preside over chaos in Kano Absolutely. or any part of Nigeria. Any part of so guys, we know that when two elephants fight, it's the grass that suffers it. Now the people of Kano are the ones suffering from this political loggerhead. It's all about politics. I mean, it's all about politics. I just hope that the Ganduje's group, stroke, the current governor's group, will see the need to come together to make sure they follow the path of peace so that peace can be restored. I don't know what you have to say about this in the comment section below. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. Thank you.